Well, 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 my fellow Unkindled, it's the penultimate episode of the repainting series. We're having some I'm the main character mentality today as we paint the main classes from the main set of the board game. The giveaway is still running to the end of the series and the last one is next Sunday. So be sure to stick around to find out how to enter. And engage in jolly cooperation. Looks like we have four chosen undead to light the flame. We have the assassin, the herald, the knight, and the warrior. And now just to grab the little dudes that I painted last year, here they are. And you can see each one is suffering from a drowning of oils, especially when it comes to the warrior, which I really messed up the painting of. And my mate said to me, ah, oh, don't worry, drown it in null oil, jobs are good. So hopefully we can do some improvements on these four today. So let's start off by priming them with some black. Now that is a pretty smooth transition right there. I'm gonna start off by painting the knight as it's the coolest looking one in my opinion and will be a good one to get our head in the game with. And same as before in all the other repainting videos, I'm just zenithal highlighting with some white ink in the airbrush. And since I have some white ink already in the airbrush, it just makes sense to highlight the other three characters while we're at it to save some time and to save some ink. Now to start off with the knight, I'm going to dry brush on some lead belcher onto the armour, nice and simple to start. Then for the cloth parts of the armour, I'm just going to use some of this Talisar blue contrast paint as it's a nice vivid blue and that's going to be the main striking colour for focus on the model. To which I will apply some onto the shield as well. Then for the hilt of the sword, I'm going to use some of this Fulgurite Copper, which is a slightly deeper tone than the gold that I have, and it's a lot richer in my opinion, so should look good against the blue tones. I'll also apply this to the rim of the shield as well. With that done, I'm applying some Rhinox Hide to the leather of the armour. So the trousers under the plates, as well as the belt around his waist. Then going over those leather areas we've just done with some Mournfang Brown just to add some highlights to them. Then for some further highlighting and edge highlighting to the leather, I'm just adding some Zandri Dust to it. And for a lovely little glaze wash, I'm just going to super thin down some Abaddon Black and use this to wash over all the areas of shadow to boost them up a little bit. With that done, the last little bit left to do on the armour is just to edge highlight it with some Corax White. Then to finish off the shield, I'm going to use some Rhinox Hide to add some darker shading to the shield in between the little copper areas. And last but not least, some Runefang steel to the crest on the front of the shield to really bring it out from the blue. Now let's compare it to the old one. We can see that the new knight has a lot more life to it. It's brighter, it's shinier, it has a lot more interest to it than the one tone Malone knight previously done. So that's one of four done. Time to move on to the pesky little assassin. So for this guy, I went and bought a new contrast paint to see how it looks. And that paint is the Snake Bite Leather Contrast. And let me tell you, this sh fucking rocks. It's probably my favorite contrast paint that I bought to date. So on all the little leather parts of this dude's armor, of which there are plenty as it's a light leather armor set, I'm just applying a layer of this contrast and it should react really nicely to this white highlight tone we've applied with the airbrush. You can see here how it's already giving us some interesting tones to build upon. So just carrying on from the legs and painting the gloves as well as the belt with the snake bite leather contrast. And for the main body of armor, I'll be using some of this Basilicanum gray contrast paint as it should work quite nicely with the leather contrast color. So just starting off painting his little boots here and then moving up to painting the main body with the gray contrast. And you can see how it's shaping up already with just a couple applications of this contrast paint. It really is very cool stuff. 
Then to finish off his hood, I'm gonna go back to the snake bite leather and just get that all over the hood there. Then for his tiddly little face, I just wanna base it with some Gilliman's Flesh Contrast. Just contrast on contrast, baby. Levels, curves, and contrasts. Then for the shield, I'm gonna dry brush on some lead belcher and also apply a layer of this dry brushing to the sword as well. And to highlight the sword and the shield metallic colors that we've just done, I'm gonna use some Rune Fang Steel to dry brush on, just to the whiter parts left over from the Zenithal highlight. After that, I'm taking some Abaddon Black and reducing it down to a glaze consistency, going over all the little shadowy regions to bring out those shadows some more. There's lots of nice little dips and creases in the leather armor to which you can enhance the shadows. The more obvious parts too, like the armpit and underside of the limbs can work really well with some more shadowing. Then we can get a little progress check on this little dude to see how he's shaping up so far. Taking some Corax white, I'm just gonna use some of it to edge highlight on the shield as well as the top of the edge of the blade. And I'm going to use some Zandri dust to detail in the little strings on the bottom of his top here. Then I'm just going to glaze on some Mournfang brown to the leather parts as well, just to sort of oomph it up a bit more and give a bit more colour to it. And to highlight the face, I'm going to use some Kislev flesh and just paint it on the cheekbones, the nose, the brow and the chin, just to bring them out a little bit. It would be nice if my camera could focus. Then to add some shadow to the face, I'm taking some Night Quester flesh and painting it in the dips of the cheeks and around the eyes and the lower parts of the face to bring out those shadows on his face. And lastly, to bring out some ultra highlight on the face, I'm gonna gently detail on some Wraith Bone. Now to compare, let's just focus this camera a bit better and we can see the original here, very blah. And when compared to the new one, you can see how much detail this contrast paints can bring to a miniature like this. With some extra dry brushing and detailing on it, it really makes the leather pop. Time for the Herald. Now, I wanted this to be a blue Herald when I started, but I quickly came to the decision that it looked shit. So I'm just gonna time-lapse this part as we'll be going back over it later. For the leather parts, it's, yep, you guessed it, it's the snake bite leather contrast paint. So I'm just gonna use this to go over the leather parts, including the boots, the gloves, and the shawl as well. Then for the main top, I'm gonna use some more Basilicanum Gray and just get that all nicely over it. Now, because I did not like the blue being the main color on the cape, I thought it would be a sort of cool undertone within the shadow color. So I'm gonna go back over the blue parts that I did earlier, including these trouser parts here, and the cape with some Corax white. Then taking some Celestra gray and start overlaying that blue a bit more and start making it a bit more of a grayish kind of blue. And you can kind of see what I'm going for here now a bit more. It's going to be mainly a grey and white tone with some bluish tint to the shadows. I'm going to use some Rhinox Hide here to start adding some leather shadowing to the boots, the gloves and the shawl. Just keeping it nice and thin and following the shadow pattern left by the highlight on the contrast job. Then for the helmet, the shield and the spear tip, I'm just going to dry brush on some lead belcher as the base. And to highlight it a bit more, I'm going to whip out the Iron Breaker to start adding some brighter metallic tones. The handle of the spear is going to be coloured in using a mix of Rhinox Hide, Mournfang Brown and Zandri Dust for the shadow, the mid-tone and the highlights. Also using Zandri Dust to colour in the little rope bit on it as well. To finish up this part, I'm gonna edge highlight the shield, helmet, and spear tip with some Corax White.
Then following the same method as before, which we did with the assassin in the face, I'm just going to be painting it on with some Gilliman's flesh to act as the main base coat, and then follow that with some Kislev flesh, then some Nightquester flesh to act as the highlights and the shadows. And voila, here is how the two compare. The new one has some more depth and dynamism to it. I brought out a lot more of the detail from the miniature, which you can really notice when next to the old one. But now it's last, but by no means least, the warrior, the one I f***ed up most. So let's start by getting his cape all nice and red, shall we? So keeping with the theme of contrast paints, I'm going to lacquer on some of this flesh tear as red to the cape. The red will react really nicely to the white undercoat, so we should get some pretty good looking detail out of this one. There are also some fur parts on this model, around the shoulder and around the tops of the boots as well, which I'm going to paint using some Skeleton Horde contrast paint. It's a contrasty kind of day. Then back to some snake bite leather for the boots and the leather on his arms as well. I'm going to use some Iron Warriors on the chainmail of the warrior and just dry brush it all over. Also onto the axe, leaving enough space to start dry brushing on some highlights after. For the highlights, I'm going back to my Runefang steel and I'm just going to lightly apply this to the lighter areas of the metallics. And with the metal tone done for now, I'm going to colour in the shield with the leather contrast, just to act as a base coat for the wood, to which I can start adding some extra browns on for detailing after. I'm also going to use a bit of it across the fur around the lower parts, just for some sort of shading variation across them. I'm going to take some Rhinox hide and use it to paint the leather straps across his chest and his belt as well. And then just start scratching on some shaded marks onto the shield with this colour too. Time to glaze and just thinning down some Abaddon black and going back over some darker areas to whack up those darker tones a bit more. For the helmet, I'm just going to dry brush on some Retributor armor, just for a bit of gold tint to the raised details on it. Then with some Wraithbone, just go over the tops of the fur to bring out some more highlights. Same as the Assassin and the Herald, I'm going to paint the face with some Gilliman's flesh as a base, then highlight with the Kislev flesh and shade with the Nightquester flesh. Add some Null Noil onto the helmet so it sits nicely within the recesses of it. Then just to finish off the cape by dry brushing on some Mephiston Red to the outermost parts. And to finish this all off with a little bit of flair, I'm using some of this coagulated blood from Green Stuff World to spread out across the axe, the axe handle, the shield and a bit on his body, making sure to layer up more blood on areas where it's most likely to pool. And there he is, our little barbarian warrior. Let's compare it to the original. It's not great really, there's no interest to it. It looks sticky, it looks grim and drowning in oil. And here's the new one, more colourful, brighter, more vivid, has a lot more interest to it with a lot more highlights and shadows. And the coagulated blood I think always makes something like this model extra authentic and gives it a real extra snazz to it. And with him done, that is the last of the four main characters complete and ready to link the flame. Here they are all together at last. What a beautiful looking bunch. Better watch out Gwen, these boys are coming to get ya. And on that note, before I leave, let's dive into the giveaway as we are reaching the end of the series. As explained in the previous repainting videos, on Sundays I'll be releasing a new video as part of the repainting series and by the end of it we will have a fully painted collection of the main board game set. This is the prize, this exact and complete Dark Souls board game, painted by me. To enter all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave a comment below answering this week's question. I'll be picking a winner from the comments across all videos in this repainting series, so the more videos you comment on, the more chance you have to win. For this episode, I would like you to comment below and tell me what you think is the best original soundtrack across Souls. Vought, you know, is highly rated obviously, as well as Ludwig in Bloodborne, as is the Medulla music in Dark Souls 2, so comment below, tell me what you think is the best theme in the game. And as ever gang, I hope you enjoyed today's video, if you did, 
please drop a like and hit the subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow and reach new people. Also, click that bell to turn on notifications while you're at it so you get updated the moment a new video drops. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I will see you all in the next one. The last one. Peace out, gang. And don't you dare go hollow.